let's say we want to tweak some of the uh, the gameplay code while while the game is running then we can do that and the way I do that is by just uh, hot reloading the code so I, this is my Odin code here you ha we have this air dash you see you see that it it goes from maybe goes from here to here and let's try extending that how long that goes so that I will find in my code it's called okay here we go for example so this is when you're in this state where you dash and fly then this code is run each frame it sort of sets the velocity depending on the facing of the characters to something and then it says that this will not be affected by gravity and then uh, if if it has been in this state for more than 0 0.2 seconds then it sets the state normal so like well, one thing we could do here is just while the game is running we can change this to uh, half a second and we can go back here and then I can dash much longer and that actually what this did when I so I pressed F I can show this again I I do this I press F7 uh, and I just tab back to my game and then it recompiled the DLL with the game and the game is split into actually an EXE and a D and a game DLL and the EXE is continuously mo monitoring if this DLL has changed and if it does change it will uh, s load in the new one but use the same memory so and then you just keep the game running so the thing here is already this with that kind of hot reload is when so I I, uh, I look at you know other game designers that have this incredible stamina for uh, waiting for compilations and restarting the game and I'm like no I I need to like you know I need to tweak my uh, I need to tweak my code to do this like l tiny little thing and make try to make it perfect and if I have to restart the game and wait like a few even like you know 20 seconds each time then I'm already kind of like I don't have this stamina to do that I lose I, it becomes boring or uninteresting or something so the game is split into an exe this one and then there's a game.dll so the exe is just like a little Brapple application and game.dll is well this file here is the sort of game code it goes into dll and that will be this will be the big one uh, and the the loader will stay small so we can look at the code for the loader uh, so the, the main there's the main proc uh, so what this main do thing does is that it loads the game I API and load game API is a function that's up here it's quite boring to look at because it does like fetching functions manually from a DLL but essentially it it uh, it uh, loads uh, a DLL uh, where does it load it here it loads a DLL and then it checks in that DLL for a bunch of function pointer pointers which are the ones we need and then it assigns them to an API struct and this API struct is here looks like this it has like an init window init update shutdown blah 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 and the and these uh, the, what this init function does it returns a raw pointer with the memory the game needs and the update function takes that raw pointer every frame and this is how when I hot reload, uh, like normally without resetting everything, I can st the whole game state stays because this init function is only run when I do a full reset. If I just do a hot reload, this is not run, and then update is just fed the same memory over and again. So that's the game API, and what we can see here that it it runs this load function. You get the game API. If it fails, then it just returns and says some error message. And then it this I it needs the window window separately. Uh, this is just because I don't want it to create the window when I reset the whole game. Because when I reset the game with you know this F when I do this in the game, when I just run and I want want to play from start again, I don't want it to create a new window. So I do this separately. But this is th then the init function returns the game memory. Blah blah blah, and. Here is the, it says that last time I checked the, the game DLL, okay, <laughs> you know what, this one isn't used. <laughs> so I think it checks every frame. Yes, it does. Okay, let's let's remove this one. Uh, 
And this is the main loop of the program. So it uh, runs the game API.update, which is my main update function. And that one is fed the game memory, which is returned by the init function. And uh, uh, this is just like, I can show this function, but game update. It just up does some, draws the world and does some update stuff. We'll look at that more later. And uh, yeah, so it <coughs> sets the window. Oh, th this one also return if you close the window or something. And uh, then there is like, oh, if you press F5, then we force a reload, which is just it just refreshes the game DLL without restarting the game. And then there's a force restart, which also clears all the memory and all that. And this is the re this is the thing that automatically makes sure that we can reload the like when if I compile from outside and the game is running, it needs to uh, reload the uh, the DLL. So this thing does that. So it checks the modification time that was set on the game API when load game API was run, and it compares that to this one that it just fetched, and then it says reload true if that was not the same. And reload true just loads a new game API, and if that one loaded OK, then it does, and here it does a kind of funny thing, which I think is a good idea. Um, so, uh, like I said, if you change struct layouts, then your game might crash. Like essentially, like you, you, you because you're, what this update function does, it's fed the same memory each frame. So if I change struct layouts and then it's fed the same memory, and then it's like, haha, look, this memory that you fed me, I'm gonna use it with this other struct layout that wasn't created with and then it suddenly reads things in the wrong order or reads outside the memory or whatever you know so what uh, this thing does is it asks the game memory uh, the game api like so what's your memory size and this is sort of you know for the main game memory blob so since it has both apis currently loaded it hasn't unloaded the old one yet it, sh it compares them or if someone pressed f6 to force a restart if any of those is true, then it actually shuts down the whole game API, which cl clears all the memory, resets the tracking allocator, which will report leaked stuff. And then it unloads the game API, and then it uh, sets the game a API to new API. And this sort of protects you a bit. I mean, it, it's not perfect, but it does protect you a bit from accidentally crashing. You, you, <laughs> you just compile, and then the memory has changed like the the, the layout of the struct is changed and uh, then you crash so it, it's a little, little protection for that but if if force restart is false or the memory size is the same then it just unloads the game api and sets the new one to I guess that's game api, the game api to the new one which then will each frame feed the same memory again and this is what makes the hot reload work and it's also why it's possible to tweak the uh, gameplay code so easily. The, there was a thing here about uh, keep in mind that you need a copy of the DLL so the game can use it without blocking the file for the compiler. And this is true. Um, so what my load game API function does here, if I go to it, and then there's an API version which I tick for each time I reload, I just tick this up. And then it, uh, blah, it uh, that's the name it will copy it to. So here it actually, I copy game.dll to this thing and uh, then I use that, which means I, it works properly. 